Hey, everybody, and welcome to something I've been really looking forward to over the last couple of weeks. John, thank you so much for being here with us. I really appreciate it. And the reason why I've been looking forward to this is I, I actually just let John in on it before we hopped on the show. I had a green Mojave in my backyard not too long ago, and my son and my husband and my dog stumbled upon it, um, and that was kind of a scary situation. So I thought being here in Arizona, it's probably a good idea to learn a little bit about what lurks around us in this beautiful desert. So welcome, John. I, again, appreciate your time and for you being here. Absolutely. No, it's my pleasure. Can you give us a little bit of background on you? Tell us a little bit about your experience and why you are my snake guy today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So my father was a game warden with the Game Fish Department for 30 years. So I grew up uh, with uh, essentially uh, going along with him and uh, seeing just about every uh, every single Arizona wildlife species that, that you could think of, including snakes, including helping him a lot with uh, captures uh, and relocations. And I uh, became a game warden myself, was a game warden for 25 years, uh, retired in 2013 and became a, an environmental science teacher for uh, Mason Public Schools. And I've been doing that for about the last nine. So. I have done a lot of a uh, lot of snake captures. I have a lot of experience with uh, with reptiles. Uh, did a lot of reptile enforcement. Did a lot of reptile. Um, have done a lot of reptile talks, and have done a lot of reptile removals from just about every corner of the valley as well. <laughs> Sounds like a great time. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was actually a pretty good career. Pretty good career. We had a, we had a lot of fun. I'm sure it was really interesting. Yes, definitely. It was interesting. It was never. It was definitely never a dull moment. <laughs> I bet. And I bet people were very excited to see you coming when they had one wrapped around the toilet or something. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, we've taken them from yards. We've taken them from garages. And we've even taken them from inside people's homes, believe it or not. And oh. it's funny you, you mentioned wrapped around toilets because that's exactly where we took one out. A rattlesnake, a diamondback rattlesnake wrapped around someone's toilet. So, <laughs> yes, they, they can get just about everywhere. That is what, <clears throat> excuse me, nightmares are made of, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I thank you so much for doing what you do for the people out there or having done what you did do, because I know that it's very, very helpful. And myself included, I was very grateful to have somebody that had some experience that could come and help us out in our time of need. And it was like at night and it was dark. And so all the scary stuff. But speaking of intrusion, what, let's just jump right in. In, in terms of preventing property intrusion, what kind of measures can we take to discourage rattlesnakes from even entering the property to begin with? Is there anything that we can do as homeowners? Yeah, absolutely. So snakes are just like any any other organism. So snakes uh, like you and I or, or or rats or birds or anything else love, want food, water, and shelter. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, here in the desert, uh, desert's beautiful. However, desert in the desert, food, water, and shelter is in kind of short supply. So they will get it uh, wherever they can take it. So if you have a home that has um, so some beautiful plants, has great landscaping, has a lot of water, has a pool, has a hot tub, uh, especially because a hot tub is a little warm, a, cool, a pool deck is warm, uh, they will tend to kind of uh, want to hang out there. Well, the, only, the other thing that likes warmth uh, and likes grass and likes good landscaping are their prey, uh, which are rats and critters and different things that they love to eat. So they are going to follow that food uh, wherever they go. Uh, uh, snakes have great um heat sensing organs on their uh on their, what we call their pits uh they uh, near their nose so they can see uh they, they essentially they're looking at an infrared image of their prey and they will follow their prey it doesn't matter if it's over a wall it doesn't matter if it's through a fence uh it's uh they're going to try and get that piece of food uh and uh, a, a rat or a mouse will last the snake for a little while for a while they'll only have to eat every, uh, they don't have to eat but uh a few days out of the month and that that will kind of hold them however unfortunately when you do have great yards so uh with that said the best thing to do uh it's hard to keep them out of their yard i will be all can be this is not just rattlesnakes this is any snake snake snakes are uh pretty industrious they can get just about anywhere you can get a great big snake that will fit through a small hole if they are looking to get some water or some heat warmth or uh, some prey and to and to get a meal. Uh, but you there are, uh, walls are always really good. Uh, mm -hmm. Fences, like pool fences and that, that's basically just like opening the door. Um, mm -hmm. So they can go through fences fairly easily. Um, 
but if you have um if you do have a pool fence or you do have a, a fence that has essentially just like bars uh you can put uh not chicken wire but you can get wire that is fairly small um it has fairly small leaks small holes to it uh put maybe a two or three foot swath of that around um your your backyard say a bit especially if it butts up against the desert which i know a lot of places in Awatuki do yeah uh, that's where i'm up at against yep yeah, if it butts up against the south mountains um those usually are pretty good because you could actually grow plants next to them and those will actually kind of will have the tendency to keep uh, snakes out um if they have to try too terribly hard they're not going to waste a lot of energy uh they'll usually kind of move on because there's lots of other there's lots of other places and the guy that doesn't snake proof his house he's gonna they're gonna go there normally so but that's one thing to do in your yard i'm not saying it's gonna work 100 percent of the time because snakes if a snake wants to get back there it will um now let's keep them out of the yard and away from the pool um the other thing is to keep them out of, to keep them out of the garage. The times that they have gone into, we found them in garages. It's usually because there is an entry door into the garage uh, that opens to the outside that is got a hole in it or has uh, doesn't close all the way, doesn't seal. Or if you have a garage door that doesn't come all the way down and seal, mm-hmm. they will get in there. Or if you happen to leave your garage door open, I, we had um, many of the of the calls that we went on were people that kept their garage door open overnight. Uh, um, either forgot to do that or they did it as a general rule. Um, and you do that and it's nice and warm in the garage, especially in the winter. Mm-hmm. Just kind of sit, they'll find someplace dark. And then when you go to get um, your games for game night or you go to get your deck of cards or your golf clubs, they're going to be right there somewhere. Uh, and so that is uh, it just a little bit of just a little bit of prevention, just making sure you, everything is sealed that's supposed to be sealed. Uh, that is that, and that means screen doors um, opening to the pool. That means security doors that are, you know, of your front. If you're going to keep your just your security door open, make sure that it's sealed because they can get in just about everywhere. Um, but if it's sealed, uh, if it's sealed properly, it's it's hard for them to get in. What about dog doors? Dog doors are another story. They um, they can get through dog doors very 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 easily. In fact, that is one of the other um, one of the other ways that um, snakes can get into homes because uh, they're it doesn't matter how big the dog door is. They can get into a uh, dog door for a chihuahua or and definitely get into a dog door for a mastiff. Yeah. Uh, and so again, that's something that uh, you take a chance uh, when you have. Uh, when you have a dog door, uh, some just say a lot of times if you have one open just to a small area that you can seal off in the backyard, that's great. And that's uh, what uh, I know that and uh, uh, several times we told people, look, just you may have to move your dog door because they were butting up against the desert. And this is I spent most of my career in Tucson. OK. And Tucson is, um, yeah, Tucson's famous for uh, rat snakes getting into homes. And one of the main, uh, like I said, the main offender is keeping garage doors open and dog doors. Mm. So they would uh, uh, let the dogs out uh, and then keep them in, close and close the dog door. Uh, unfortunately, they can't go out and and go to the bathroom during the day. But it's something that you, if you don't want snakes in your house, it's something you may have to take a little time to train your dog to do that. Might be something you want to look at. I totally agree. Yeah. So if, and I appreciate all of that. That was a lot of great info. What should we do if we encounter a rattlesnake on our property? Now I'm going to see if I did it right or not. <laughs> Yeah, so the first thing to do is just just leave it alone. Is everyone's everyone's first reaction is to go and start poking it with a stick. Mm. Wow, it's cool. Let's go check it out. Um, the rat. I mean, it's like uh, no other sound in the world. You cannot mistake a rattlesnake for anything else. Uh, and it's if you do like nature, if you are, uh, you like, if you, I mean, you go, you live in places like Awatuki. You live in places like in Tucson, like or some areas around. Like, you do love nature it's cool to see a bobcat out in the desert it's cool to see coyotes it's cool to see javelina until they start coming into your yard <laughs> and then that that's be, becomes a problem well, um, first and foremost um, there are a lot of resources uh there's a lot of resources uh, uh all the wildlife centers around uh the southwest wildlife liberty wildlife have uh, individuals that will come out 24 7 and come uh, review remove snakes. Now we have this wonderful thing here in our hands that we can 
punch in uh, snake removers near me and Google will take you right to individuals that you can call. And these people, these are people that are licensed. They are trained. They're trained because there's two things you want. To, they want to remove the, the snakes and they don't want to, they don't want to injure them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you don't want to injure the snake while you're taking it out. Yeah. That's the other thing is when two things will happen if you try and do it on your own is that you'll probably end up getting bit. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about that in a second, um, you know, about getting bit as far as dry bites and, and venomation and stuff. But mm-hmm. you get bit and then you'll hurt or you'll hurt the snake. And if you hurt the snake, uh, then you have a really, really angry, injured snake in your backyard. Yeah. Uh, so they and, and injured injured animals do things that, you know, just out of instinct. So, uh, again, that's something that you don't kind of want to mess with. Leave it to somebody that is that is licensed and it's trained. They can go out there, get it done quickly and get it out of there. Yeah, makes sense. Great advice. Don't want to upset the snake. <laughs> no, no, no. And about nine times out of 10. So probably 90 percent of the people that I, I that we knew got bit in 25 years and a few maybe years and years before that working with my father is people got bit when they were trying to either remove it themselves or they were trying to mess with poking it with a stick or messing with it. Yeah. The other part uh, is st- accidentally stepping on one. Snakes do not want to waste their venom on you because they can't eat you. You're too big. Mm-hmm. So um, it is very, very energy intensive to make venom for a snake. They don't want to waste it. So they're not going to bite you unless they absolutely have to, unless they feel really, really threatened. And they have, and they have to really almost there. They have, a, I mean, almost a fight or flight response. Um, if you mess with it to the point when you, when you corner it, you may get in venom. You, you, you may get bit and it may have some venom to it. Some. A lot of times they will bite you and it's called a dry bite. Um, again, they will, it's just a dry bite to get you away, to make you think twice because it, it costs them a lot of energy to make venom. So you may get a dry bite. You may not. You don't want to take the chance. Yeah. You, you don't want to find out. What is the typical striking distance of a snake? So for instance, if I were to get within what range typically would that be the danger zone? So in general, if you see a big snake, you see, and it's hard to, and it's hard to gauge how big they are, especially if they're coiled. Yeah. But you you figure about half its distance, half its body half its body length, they are probably can can get you. Um, so if you have a three foot snake, say a foot and a half, you have a big six foot snake, which is not heard of, which is not unheard of, especially in in the uh, in South Mountain on South Mountain. Uh, figure three feet. That's a long way. Yeah, that is That's a long, a long way. way. Yes, and you got to get a lot closer than that to try and get them and put them into a container to get them out of there. So. To think of, uh, and people need to think about that before they start to try and do that stuff themselves. Yeah, I can see how that takes some skill. Are there any signs or behaviors or anything that I should do? So I told you a little bit, I live in Ahwatukee, I back South Mountain. I've got some some bushes and things out there that I worry about that there might be snakes underneath. Is there anything that I can do to just find out if I have a problem today? You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Pick up. So they've got you go down to REI, you go down to any of the of outdoor stores. They've got walking sticks, those collapsible walking sticks. Uh, you can go and if you've got uh, if you've got bushes that you think look suspect, walk over. And if you most of those are about, you know, about five and a half, five and a half feet tall. Give a give the bush a little smack, a little poke to see if because uh, they will they will alert. They will start to rattle when they, okay. when they feel threatened. Um, the other thing you can do is now. I don't, and I'm not saying this because I want people to start using snake hooks. To, but there are they sell commercial snake hooks that are really good, that are really long, okay, that you can use uh, to kind of turn over rocks. You know, they're they're a little thicker on the end. Uh, you can use to turn over rocks if you think that there's could be a rock or under under a dog's dog bowl if mm. you feed dogs outside or water or a water bowl or a um, even uh, around a fountain or a pool. Uh, anything you can use to you can that you can turn things over at a distance is always good just to check just to make sure. Um, and then there are what we call things called snake tongs. Now snake tongs are as short as two feet and as long as seven feet, and they are actual tongs. You um, so if you ever, everyone's seen those uh, little grabbers they use uh, people that use to take things off of the top of shelves or to pick up trash. It's essentially a modification of that. Now again. That will 
But uh, if you get those, it doesn't mean that, hey, now that I have snake tongues, I know how to handle a snake. All right. <laughs> because they uh, they have a really nasty habit of kind of crawling up the tongues to come get you. And they're not they're not coming to get you. They're trying to get away. They're just going towards you to try and scare you. And people panic. Mm. And when they panic, they get bit. Mm. Whew. Like I said, that's what nightmares are made of right there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I might not sleep tonight, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about safety and first aid. So what steps should I take if I, or somebody I know is bit? Okay, someone you know is bit and they call you or you're there, get them to the hospital quickly, very, very quickly. There is really no, you you don't have antibiotic to administer to them. Um, you don't cut the, you don't do like the old Western movies and cut the, cut the uh, bite site and suck it out. Uh, they used to do that. They used to teach us to do that, believe it or not. And they used to give us great big suction cups. Um, however, snake fangs are just like big, great, big, long hypodermic needles. Uh, when you get a when you get a flu shot, um, it's not like the doctor. And if you're allergic, it's not like the doctor can cut where he gave you a shot and suck all of the medicine out. Right. Same thing with this with snake venom. It's not, not like you can cut it. It's already in your bloodstream. Especially the fact that you've been bit. It's not like your heart rate is going to be 60 beats per minute. It's going to be somewhere up around 200. Yeah. So it's moving blood really, really fast. So the best thing for you to do is try and keep the person calm. If you get bit, try and stay calm. I know it's a hard thing to say. Try and stay calm. If someone is at home, you tell them, I need to go to the doctor right now because you need to go to the emergency room. They're not going to make you wait, I promise. You just tell them you were just bit by a rattlesnake. They're going to take you in and they're going to start to stabilize you and start to and start to administer anti-venom right away. Because what's happening, especially with um most of, with the exception of uh, the um, green Mojave and with the with the coral snake, um, it's hemotoxin. The toxin that they have is toxin or venom that will start to break tissue down, start to make it die. It starts at the site. Um, they, your whatever extremity has been bit is going to swell very, very, very large. I've seen people's arms and legs swell up to the size of a watermelon, and the the uh, skin start to split. So they have, there are measures that they can take to start to kind of keep the uh, tissue from splitting, uh, to keep the tissue from dying. The antivenom is just to keep you from dying, to keep you from get it, uh, keep it from getting to your heart and causing you to go into cardiac arrest. Um, but doesn't mean that you are probably not going to lose some tissue. Uh, if you get bit in the hand or the fingers, you might lose the tips of fingers or pieces of hand. Uh, I know people, individuals get bit here all the time, and I've seen individuals that have had this part of their hand uh, gone. And these are individuals that have handled snakes their entire lives. Wow. So, um, again, they just stay calm. Try and stay as calm as you can and get to the hospital as quickly as you can. There's really nothing a civilian can do. There's really nothing paramedics can do, uh, really, to get you to, to handle anything, a snake bite in the field. They can kind of mitigate. Um, they can put some ice to kind of maybe slow some blood flow. The last thing you want to do is use a tourniquet because what will happen is, is if you put a tourniquet on uh, above the site where you were bit, um, as that venom goes through, it's going to pull where the tourniquet is. And you are probably going to lose that extremity because it is going to start to destroy all the tissue around that area very, very quickly. Yikes. So how do you feel about snake bite kits then? Snake bite kits, uh, they make people feel good mm. that they have a snake bite kit. Um, there's really nothing oral you can take. There's nothing you can't uh, get a shot for it. You know, only shot you're getting is anti venom, and usually that's in an IV. Mm -hmm. um, like I say, a lot of times they'll give you a, there's snake kits that I've seen that actually still give you razors to cut the bite site and for you to suck it out. Um, and there is or, a little suction thing, like you were talking about. Have, yes, and have a little suction. Those are great if you get stung by bee. Okay. Or stung by something that you can you can actually that is kind of fairly slow moving. Um, you can get that venom out very quickly, and have you done that before? But um, you not you are not going to be able to get anti venom out because now you have an individual um, that is trying to use a snake bite kit that he or she themselves will get envenomated just inadvertently if they have cuts on their hands. Um, uh... A lot of I've had we've had people that have tried to suck out the poison they've had. Um, a one had, had just had their wisdom teeth out and they had um, healing wounds and they were envenoming through their mouth because that venom immediately went through those incisions in their mouth. 
Uh, so again, yeah, it's not something. It's like not like the olden days. <laughs> Stuff has been kind of proven. Yeah, probably not going to work very well. <laughs> it didn't go so hot for those cowboys after the cameras were off, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's, so, there's the dogs. oh there they are that's cool we're dog people we get it so as far as rattlesnake behavior what are the typical typical habits and behaviors of rattlesnakes like i have heard april is is rattlesnake month is that true or what's the that's, what's the scoop yep, of that? that's absolutely true yeah that is absolutely true so it's spring everything comes out in spring um you get their what's coming out first is their um their prey. So you see the bunnies. Their, uh, the kangaroo rats and pocket mice and bunnies and you see everything and all the wildflowers are coming out. Well, they're um, it's starting to get warmer. Snakes um, are snakes need exterior heat okay, to stay warm. They need exterior heat to digest their food. Okay. So they uh, so they need all those they don't need those nice hot rocks. They need the nice warm pavement. They need the nice warm garage and the nice warm pool deck. Uh, when after they have uh, eaten their prey, they get to go and and kind of lay out on a nice hot surface so they can digest their food. Okay. So yes, April definitely. If you kind of noticed, it's starting to get warm. It's mm -hmm. uh, starting to get warm, and they are starting to come out. So it is, and uh, people need to kind of take heed when they are out in the desert hiking uh, because it yeah it is the beginning of snake season. And I kind of thought of that. So I, I didn't really see the bunnies too much, you know, all winter long. I mean, here and there, but not as much as I am now. And there's little bunnies. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, it's like ringing the dinner bell. <laughs> oh, it's sad. <laughs> I know. What time of day? Yeah, or... When I say that, yeah, I say that. And my wife says, you're so cold. I'm like, I, I'm i a biologist. I Sorry, I can't <laughs> think of it any other way. Science. I love bunnies too, yeah. but snakes got to eat too. <laughs> yeah, true that. Hey, they're part of the food chain. I get it. Yeah. Is there a particular time of day or even multiple times of day where the conditions are a little bit more snake friendly, where you might see them moving around a little bit more than others? You're going to see them mostly at night. They're nocturnal. So oh, okay. that so their snake spray come out at night. Uh, they're nocturnal. That's why most of the time during the day, you're going to see them kind of in a bush. You're going to see them under a rock. Uh, they're going to um, you get to the point where it gets too hot. So they're going to hide. For a while until nighttime because it's not like they can hide they're great they've got great uh means of camouflage but their prey is also evolved to the point where they can see them as well uh okay. so they are night hunters they come out at night so when you come out to the pool and do night swim or you come out uh just out on the porch and stuff you really need to take a flashlight uh, especially if you live butting up against the desert or the forest or anywhere else that you, you have animals that you have wild animals, especially in the desert with snakes. And that, that goes for, for you know, the scorpions and the black widows and everything else. You have to be a little more uh, little more cognizant of what your surroundings are and take a look and see what uh, what's there before you sit down. Because they are going to, they're going to come out. They're going to be looking. And you're, you know, the bunnies, you love the bunnies coming into the yard and you love, you see all the little kangaroo rats and the pack rats and stuff. Well, that's what the snakes are going after. So, and what will happen is the snakes will hunt. They'll make a kill they'll digest they'll swallow it and then the first place they're going to go is a nice warm safe place which is right on your most of the time right on people's yards or yeah. on their on their pool deck or in the garage yep ours was in our garden that was real fun yes. lots lots of rocks down there and it's dark oh yeah and quiet yeah yep and it's most and it's an area that they don't think they're going to get disturbed because they don't know any better um, snakes are very, very, uh, they're, they're really sensitive to vibration. Okay. So they're going to, they're going to sit there, they're going to lay out and they're going to kind of assess what the type, what types of vibrations are getting. Uh, and when you got somebody got, what did, what did happen? Did it start rattling when someone got close? Yes. So my husband went out to water the plants that we have down there. It was middle of summer. They were looking a little wilty. So I sent him out and he made it an adventure and went out with my nine-year-old and my dog all in a, you know, in a row, all going out to water the plants. And he was first and he heard the rattle. So they just backed away slowly, went into the house, and then we called somebody. So there was no real right. encounter. Yep. What you just said, what you just explained is the absolute perfect response when Good. you see a rattlesnake on your property. That is the absolute perfect. You just described the absolute perfect response. Because that keeps you safe. That keeps the snake safe. The snake safe. And it allows the individuals that are trained to go get it and get it out of your hair.
Yeah. And they, they came pretty quick. They came, you know, within a couple of hours max. Yes. So, and the snake didn't go anywhere. Of course, I'm watching no. it through the window. You know, I'm no. not taking yeah. my eyes off <laughs> yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah, it's hard not to. When you have a rattlesnake or any type of snake in your backyard, it's like having a cool looking bird or a, or a hawk or something. You can't. It's hard to take your eyes off because that's one of the reasons that you move there. That's, that's one true. of the reasons that you love to live in there because you get that cool stuff. You get the cool wildlife stuff. That is true. Now, you had said something about, uh, so they move around at night typically. Um, yes. And you had said something about them being comfortable in dark areas. So do lights deter them? So say, for instance, if I have a bunch of like exterior lights at night, would that be a deterrent or no? They're so I'm not, I wouldn't say it's a deterrent. I mean, it's something that they're going to, uh, some will just kind of shy away from. They'll, they'll, if they're out in the open and there's a light that comes on, they don't want to expose themselves because they themselves can be prey too. Owls, ox, True. they love snakes. Mm. So they don't want to expose themselves, uh, to, uh, any other, uh, any other predator, something that preys on them. So they're immediately going to kind of go, they're going to go hide somewhere. Now, that could be, that's a catch-22. It could be good, it could be bad, because they could take off and just leave the yard, or they could find somewhere closer to that house to go hide. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> is there, as far as environmental factors, is there anything that could influence a rattle, the rattlesnake behavior and their movement patterns? Like, for instance, if we didn't get a lot of rain this year, does that affect them? Anything like that? So, and, th and that, like any other desert animal, when we have a drought, which we've been in drought for many, many years, we had a whole bunch of rain in the winter which means we're going to get a whole lot of growth, which means we're going to get a lot of rodents. Yeah. Unfortunately, that if you if you live close to areas like that, you're going to get a lot of snakes. But when everything starts to dry out in the summer, we're supposed to go into a, a La Nina cycle, uh, which is where it's going to dry out a little bit. We're not going to get the rainfall that we used to. We probably will not, more likely not, have a monsoon season. And that's when they really come out. But if they don't have water, uh, available water out in the desert, they're going to come looking for it somewhere else. And normally they're going to come uh, areas that, especially if people, <clears throat> one of the other prime areas that we find snakes is leaky hoses uh, or irrigation leaks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice and cool, nice and cool for them, uh, especially if it's areas that you have some little, a few plants that are kind of around where this irrigation leak is. Um, they love that during the day. That's like that's like heaven for them because it's cool, it's wet. They may have a prey item come by every once in a while, so they're not going to move. And that's when you're going to encounter them in your yard. Um, again, smart to uh, fix your leaks. Uh, it's smart to make sure that uh, you have no areas like that in your front or backyard or your side yards either, because that will attract them, especially when it starts to get hot. Because if they cannot, if they cannot find water uh, in the desert, they'll come a place. They'll come places that they can't, and that's usually homes. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, like we have trees in our backyard, and I'll go out there, and there'll be this big pool because you know we gotta water the tree, and so there's this big pool under the tree, and then all of a sudden that's when the bunnies come, and then who yep. comes behind that? <laughs> it's, <laughs> you know? it's just like the Lion King. It's the circle of life. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, as far as long-term solutions, is there any way that we can contribute to conservation efforts while also protecting our property and ensuring safety in terms of desert life, wildlife animals, all that kind of stuff? Um, you know, the, one of the biggest things is uh, is supporting a lot of the uh, uh, the wildlife service uh, licensees, the ones that the guys that come out, the guys and gals that come out and uh, and remove these remove these animals because they are. They're conservationists themselves. They are there for the welfare of the animal as well. They don't want the animal. They don't want you guys to get hurt. They don't want the animal to get hurt. Um, the best way to kind of protect your property is by just knowing that they're there. Okay. If you um, just just knowledge uh, that uh, knowledge of what snakes do, it's just like uh, the, what we're talking about here. Uh, hopefully people will take this information and uh, maybe do a little bit of research. Everyone's got a phone. Everyone's got a phone. We've mm -hmm. got the world at our fingertips. You, all you've got to do is punch in uh, snake, proof in a, snake proof in your yard. And a thousand entries will come up uh, to help whatever. If you live in the desert, you live in the woods, you live anywhere. Uh, there's ways to do that. It's not going to be foolproof because snakes are going to, but it, it will it will greatly reduce the, uh, the chances that you're going to encounter a snake. Now, Rattlesnakes probably aren't the only snakes you're going to see. You'll probably see bull snakes and king snakes and, mm -hmm. uh, and you name it. And if you get those, if you get something that doesn't rattle, um, that doesn't have a, a, a rattle on its tail, 
Uh, it's usually um, a, a, good, a snake that is not venomous, and it's probably in the in the uh, process of getting rid of your mouse problem or your rat problem. Yeah. Okay. And those those snakes are not going to mess with you. They're not going to bite you. They're going to kind of stay out of your way, uh, just like rattlesnakes will until you kind of go and start to um, encroach upon their their habitat. But again. Um, it's just a little common sense, a little bit of knowledge uh, helps, uh, goes a long way to understanding just exactly where we live here in the desert, because it's uh, it's no different anywhere else. I've had, uh, we've had snakes here and we live in the middle of Mesa and we, uh, the desert is, oh, the nearest desert is probably four or five miles away. And we get them here, not rat, we have not, have not seen a rattlesnake, but our, our neighbors have. No so kidding. they do come here because they are looking for, because we have lots of parks and we have lots of, uh, Lots of trees and lots of people with uh, with irrigation and lots of people with uh, uh, with bunnies and bunnies come in here and now they're not going to because uh, uh, most of the time they're not going to come into areas like this because there are a lot of roads and there are a lot of cars and there are a lot of predators that uh, can pick them off uh, you know, that are sitting on the top of every palm tree but um, so we won't see them as much but again it's still I'm still cognizant that there may be maybe out here we get lizards everywhere. And which are cool because the lizards get rid of our all of our bugs, all right. of our spiders and scorpions and everything else. So, yeah, that's helpful. but uh, just again, just common sense and a little bit, a little bit of education. No, I and, love it. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that edu education piece and the common sense piece because uh, you know it's definitely not something that I have experience with or hadn't had any experience with until yes. all of a sudden it happened and then oh my yeah. gosh, what do you do? Um, you had mentioned that they are prey for some other animals, and I can't imagine seeing like you had mentioned an owl, and, and an yes. owl really can pick them off and won't get bit, and, and the venom doesn't bother them. Or how does that well, work? Well, most of the time, uh, you say owls every once in a while. You'll see uh, red-tailed hawks. You'll see um, different types of raptors do that. And what will happen is once they um, are when they're trying to grab them or trying to take you know, get them under control, just to dig their talons in, they're wings will come out wide and the snake will strike at their wings. Their wings are not vascular. Their wings have very little very little uh, vessels running through them. So it's not gonna hurt them if the snake strikes and tries to envenomate them in the wings. And that strikes them long enough to where the, the, uh, the raptor can kind of uh, wrap its talons around the neck or uh, into the body itself. And then I've actually seen hawks carrying great big snakes off <laughs> after they kill them. <laughs> Wow. So that's one thing that's that's one of the reasons that you don't see snakes out in the open mm. very, very seldom, because that is makes them very, very vulnerable to, to predators like that. Interesting. So we have this beautiful owl that sits atop my neighbor's house every night. I see him out there. So he must not have been on duty that night. Yeah, he was probably off or, you know, on vacation or something. <laughs> He was, he was at somebody else's house. Last question. Yes. I should have asked this back when we were talking about snake removal. Um, but are there any regulations or laws regarding the handling or removal of snakes? I mean, I mean, I know it's it's important to call a professional, but is there anything yeah. like that that we should be aware of? So, yeah, I mean, if you if you take if you take something and because uh, we, we a lot of times we'll get people um, that will capture snake, uh, even rattlesnakes will capture a snake and will buy an aquarium and put that into an aquarium in their house. Now, keeping rattlesnakes is really, really stupid mm -hmm. uh, uh, for people to keep them in the house, unless you are actually a professional that, are, that knows what they're doing. Uh, uh, and it is that in itself without a hunting license is illegal. You have to have a license, either hunting or fishing license to take, and that is considered take, to uh, take those individuals or even handle them in the field. Mm -hmm. You have to have a license. Now, if you're fear for your life, from a rattlesnake and it is in your house, then yeah, that is, and then you kill the snake as a dead snake. It was, you know, snakes don't belong inside homes. Mm. You know, wild snakes don't belong inside homes on uh, in, uh, wrapped around toilets or in living rooms or anything like that. So, uh, and even you can even, and I, I mean, I, unless it is a, just a dire emergency, um, I would discourage people from killing snakes. Uh, because essentially, as a as a, uh, as, a as a as a biologist and environmental science teacher, we need all the biodiversity that we can get. Yeah. Um, but again, there are always going to be those situations where if you kill them, I mean, if you're threatened, then you can kill them. That the law provides for that. 
So yeah, you are not going to get in trouble if you do that. However, if you decide you're going to take it and keep it, um, that they do have legal ways to do that. And you have to have a license to do that. Wow. I can't imagine anybody would want one as a pet, but I mean, I guess people like snakes. You'd be surprised. <laughs> I guess it's kind you'd, of exotic and cool. <laughs> yeah. We've been, have been into probably a thousand houses with lots and lots of rattlesnakes in them that people are keeping. Yeah. It's people like, people like rattlesnakes. Wow. They like, uh, they like snakes, period. That is so crazy. Well, I really appreciate this. You have given me so much information and I'm excited to share that with our network and our followers here. So thank you so much for being here, John. It's been fantastic. I feel like I could talk snakes with you for another hour. Um, <laughs> oh, I could, I could talk. That's my wife. I could talk snakes forever. She says a lot. She says, hey, whenever she can't fall asleep, she'll just ask me about, you know, the olden days and she falls right to sleep. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, again, I appreciate you being here with us. It's been amazing. I am so much more knowledgeable now. I feel a bit more comfortable living up against the preserve just with the tips yeah. that you've given. So thank you so Wonderful. much for that. I, I hope that, uh, I hope that everybody, I, no, I'm happy to do it. I'm glad uh, I had to, thank you so much for, for inviting me on and uh, let me talk about snakes for a while. It, uh, it's one of my favorite, it is one of my favorite topics. So I'm glad uh, I could give you some information and hopefully to your viewers. And, uh, and if, uh, again, if they, anybody ever has any questions, uh, you know how to get a hold of me. Yeah, for sure. And that's, a, I was just going to ask you that. So thank you so much for offering that. Um, and then, you know, to all of you that are watching, if you're watching the replay, even years later, just go ahead and comment below. You can message me. And if you have any questions for John, I will get in touch with him. His daughter-in-law and his son are really good friends of mine. So I'm sure we'll be connected for quite some time. Again, thank you so much. And if you guys want more information, hyper-local Phoenix area information and um, you know, obviously real estate information too, because hey, that's what I do. Then you can hop on over to our YouTube channel. It is at Team Evo AZ. And uh, again, thank you for being here with us. And I hope you have a great evening. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have a good evening. All right. Thanks. Bye.